how much did I spend on my 2.5 swap? So let's just get into it. Need a little drink for this one. I don't necessarily like talking about money on this channel. Um, and I don't, I like to tell you guys like how much something might cost an install video. Like, hey, this thing cost, I don't know, for example, $30. But it's really hard to quantify it because uh, automotive hobbies, car hobbies in general are uh, pretty much a waste of money. Any hobby is a waste of money. And it would drive you crazy if you, if you obviously you budget for things. You have to budget for things. You have to save your money. You don't want to put everything on a credit card because having fun with a car is definitely not like an investment for me at least. And I've had quite a bit of you um, leave your comments and message me saying, make sure you make a video on everything that you spent and every tool and every fluid and everything. And this definitely isn't a video about everything I purchased. If I went into every single tool that I bought, um, tools are reusable. They are not specific to the 2.5. Uh, if you're gonna do this yourself at home, you're probably gonna have to buy tools. And that is just a cost of, uh, basically cost of business, if you were to call it anything. This video also isn't going to be a list or how to or what to buy for the 2.5 swap because I bought things that you don't need. I bought some performance parts and I replaced everything that I could, but I also sold my spare parts from the 2.0 that I took out. So I'll get a little bit into that on, uh, towards the end of the video, I'll give you a, a cost for me. This is very specific to me. Um, no, I don't know how much it would cost for a shop to do it for you. You know, go call Almond or call Dinotronics and they can tell you how much it might cost. They're obviously professionals, professional shops do this. I'm a hobbyist at home. Um, so that being said, this video isn't gonna cover what it costs to fix your mistakes. There's a couple of things that I had to buy to fix a mistake that I made like how I had to buy the new steering column. Uh, I'm not counting that in this video. This is basically everything I bought for the 2.5. So down in the description below, there is a Google sheet of a breakdown of my parts and uh, costs. So you can get a little behind the scenes insight on you know what, uh, what I bought, basically my list of things that I went through uh, every single week, checking off ordered, received, installed. Um, so go down below and uh, check that out. So this is in no particular order, but we're just going to go through and I'll probably show some clips throughout as we, you know, talk about this whole thing. Um, so let's start with uh, Master Speed Balance Shaft Elite Kit. That was $35. VBT Solenoid Gasket, $8. 2.5 injectors. So those came with the engine. Mine were bad, so I had to order new ones. Those were $37. Valve cover gasket set, $15. Rear main seal, $45. New thermostat, $10. Oil filter housing with sensor and gasket, $20. Oil pickup tube with gasket, $50. Water outlet for the rear of the engine, $77. Coolant temp sensor, $8. 2.0 fuel rail, $40. 2.0 valve cover, $30. 2.0 oil pan, $30. Those are two things that were included in that engine that I bought. So those prices are going to be very specific to me. Uh, I got very lucky with that. And uh, that was a $60 engine, so I split the cost for those two items. Oil dipstick, $20. 2.0 coil packs, $20. Spark plugs, $40. Times two diamond washers, $37. Crankshaft pulley bolts, $17. Cam bolts, $30. Diamond washers, again, $20. 2.0 crankshaft pulley, $35. VVT pigtail, $21. Serpentine belt, $18. Bosch oil filter, $8. I ordered a new drain plug, that was $9. Intake manifold gasket, $15. Massive speed pressure plate bolts, $18. Mazda 2.0 PCV bar, $12. Trans drain plug washer, $3. Power steering banjo bolt washer, $2. Cam angle sensor, $17. Crank angle sensor, $12. 2.0 intake manifold, $95. So those are the basics that I bought for the engine. So let's talk about some performance things that I bought for it as well. These are things that you don't need to buy, but I chose to buy them because 
I wanted to. Um, this was my build and uh, I wanted to get the best things that I could while the engine was out. So these are like the extras that I bought. The MZR Duratec Performance Stage 1 camshafts, those were $600. Exedi Happy Meal Combo with a clutch and flywheel kit, that was $650. ARP flywheel bolts, $46. AWR motor mounts, 70 durometer, those were $220. Exhaust manifold gasket, $17, and a header donut gasket and bolts, those were $20. For the Roadster Sport 1.8 inch header from Goodwin Racing, and that was $575. And then the last aftermarket bit that I bought was the CSF radiator, and that was $350. And throwing in the final piece, which is the engine which was $245 and then the little tools that I bought that I mentioned the massive speed timing kit that was $30 the tune was $125 and the EQ tech cable and module dongle whatever was $525 for everything and I did not need to get a license with my ECU since I already had one on it from when I did the tune last time. Which brings us to a grand total of $4,257 for everything that I purchased. And uh, before everyone jumps into the comment section and goes, Jackson, you could have bought a turbo kit. You could have bought a turbo kit and a supercharger kit for your 2.0. I have explained it multiple times that I didn't want to do a turbo or a supercharger kit on a engine that had 110,000 miles on it. I know some of you do it and some of you want to do it and that's totally cool. I would rather start over, new engine, uh, nice performance parts, enjoy an NA build, and then in the future we can start thinking about superchargers and turbo kits. Um, so if you want to do that, if you want to spend money on a turbo kit and supercharger, please go for it and make a video and I'll go watch your video on the install. But my uh, $4,250 price tag was uh, definitely a little bit higher than I thought it might be, um, but it's expected as well. So I have a fresh engine um, and I'm still working through the kinks and things like that, but that is what I spent. So I hope you guys found this video informative. I know. YouTube and making YouTube videos is, you know, I'm not a big YouTuber and I, I don't have a big budget. I don't spend a ton of money. This was probably one of the things that I spent the most money on for this car. Um, is it worth it for me? I'm still figuring that out. So far, I'm loving it. I'm still on the bass tune and I've been driving it around, getting the clutch broken in and it feels awesome. I, I have fallen in love with the car over again. It feels real good and I've just been enjoying it. So. Is it worth it? I'm not quite to an answer on that yet, but it's one of those things like the money's gone, the money's gone, I'm not getting it back. Um, and I have this behind me to enjoy to whatever extent that I see fit. And uh, it will be worth it to me or it might not be worth it depending on what I decide to do with it. I know a lot of people watch YouTube uh, to watch people do things that they have no interest in doing or can't do or don't have the capacity to do and I hope that uh, all my videos on the 2.5 series have been super helpful for some of you maybe it inspired some of you to do your own uh, 2.5 project and a lot of you have messaged me saying you started and um, it's really inspiring to me to hear from you guys saying oh I decided to do it myself because I saw you doing it and it really means a lot to me when I when I get those messages because you know I'm not a mechanic or anything and as a hobbyist, it's really cool to see other people enjoying the hobby as much as I have and learning something new and gaining knowledge and they can go through their whole life now saying that, oh yeah, remember that one time I changed a car engine in my garage over a few weekends. Like That's something that I can say now and it's really a cool feeling. The car's certainly not done yet. Um, this isn't an ending video to the series. There will probably be an end video to the series to close it out. But um, like I said, you know, there's some kinks to work out. There's a little oil leak. I gotta keep tuning it. Rattles here and there. Uh, otherwise, the engine sounds good. Um, I'm taking a little trip down to Austin this next weekend to um, pick up another muffler. So that's kind of exciting. I think this is the one that I'm gonna keep for a while. 
But thanks so much for everyone sticking through this video. I know I was just talking, but now you know how much I spent and how much you might ballpark to spend on your 2.5 build whenever you decide to do it. So if you are new to the channel, be sure you go down below, hit that subscribe button so you can follow along with the process and see all future videos with the NC Miata. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up, leave your comments below, and I'll see you in the next one.